the Pearl Harbor raid increased the speed and intensity of the already raging Second World War. The Imperial Japanese Navy, which put particular emphasis on aircraft carriers, started the Pacific War with 10 aircraft carriers. This was the largest and most modern carrier fleet in the world at the time. This technological advantage also extended to aircraft aboard Japanese aircraft carriers. Japanese aviators took advantage of their ace maker until the Americans unleashed an unsung hero that would turn the tides. As the land and naval combat continued with incredible violence and intensity, two deadly machines in the sky would engage in a deadly duel that would affect the fate of the Pacific. This is Combat Tech, and in this episode, we will put F6F Hellcat and A6M Zero in the ring. The Zero was a well thought out plane. When the Imperial Japanese Army challenged Mitsubishi and Nakajima to both design and build a next generation fighter to aid the war effort in China, Jiro Horikoshi, the aircraft's designer, built on the foundation of his previous design, the A5M, the world's first carrier-based monoplane. His ingenious design incorporated many of the most advanced techniques of the era, including thin elliptical wings to minimize the drag, state-of-the-art flush riveting, and an all-metal structure. Although the ambitious range requirement forced Jiro to make some sacrifices to the plane's design, so he had to prioritize speed, maneuverability, and range over heavy armor. The Zero did not have thicker plate armoring over key locations like the engine, fuel tank, and cockpit like typical fighter planes did, as it was designed on a doctrine of training skilled pilots with agile, lightweight planes. It was fast, nimble, and well-armed. The Zero's compact and modest Sakai engine was more than enough to give the lightweight fighter an excellent power-to-weight ratio, providing good acceleration and climb. Japanese pilots would also praise its elevators, which were powerful and responsive, allowing them to pull off tight turns and loops. Zero had excellent control at low speed, even on the verge of stall. Few American pilots on their own survived a turning, twisting, close-in dogfight against a capable Japanese pilot flying a Mitsubishi A6M Zero. But then a new fighter climbed into the ring. The Hellcat was developed as an improvement upon a previous Grumman plane, the F4F Wildcat, which was completely outmatched by the Zero. Unlike the Zero, which required piloting finesse, Grumman claimed the Hellcat had been designed to be flown by 200-hour farm boys. This Grumman Hellcat, seen on the screen for the first time. Folding wings pack it tight into the aircraft carrier. Outstretched, they travel in the neighborhood of 400 miles an hour. It wasn't handsome, but make no mistake, the Grumman F6F Hellcat was a born and bred bare knuckle fighter. So how did they fare against each other? The F6F Hellcat, with its much more powerful engine, beat the Zero in a flat line and matched its climb rate better. It could keep up with the Zero long enough to kill it, and should the situation turn against the Hellcat's favor, it could simply speed away in a shallow dive, climbing up again before re-engaging on more favorable terms. Also, the ruggedness of the Hellcat worked miracles. There were numerous instances of Hellcats being badly shot up in combat and managed to return to their carriers. The first large air battle fought by Hellcats took place on the 4th of December 1943, when 91 Hellcats fought 50 Mitsubishi A6M Zeros, shooting down 28 of the enemy planes and only losing two of their own. Over the course of World War II, Hellcats claimed 75% of the kills by U.S. Navy pilots. Despite not arriving until over a year and a half into the war, they destroyed more than 19 enemy aircraft for every Hellcat lost. So our verdict is a KO on this one. However, Hellcat couldn't enjoy its place for long. When these two formidable fighters became obsolete, it was a curious twist of fate that they met a similar end. 
Zeros were converted to kamikaze craft in the final months of the war, and the Hellcat, which flew in combat for 24 months, essentially vanished until it reappeared briefly as an assault drone during the Korean War.